Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everybody. This is Howard Fox with Success Insight Podcast for my co-host, Randy Ford. We hope you are having a fantastic start to your day. My guest today is Bishop Esther Seshizivu. I hope I got that right. Uh, Esther has been (laughs) active in ministry for eight years. She has a Bachelor of Law degree from Makreri University in Uganda, and I'm sure she will correct me if I messed that one up. And she has an honorary Doctor of Divinity certificate as well. She is a pastoral counselor and business management expert, and she gives spiritual coverage to her church, the Paradise Church International Ministries. Now, Esther is also the author of Overcoming Emotional Pain in a Divorce Crisis, Time-Tested Biblical Secrets that Win in a Divorce Crisis. Esther, thank you so much for joining us on the Success Insight podcast today. Thank you, Howard, for having me today. I'm so excited. Fantastic. So first question, most important one. I said your name right, correct? (laughs) Yes, you did. (laughs) Excellent. And the university in Uganda, how do we pronounce that? Makere University. Makere University. Fantastic. Ah. In the spirit of full disclosure, I love coffee. And one of my favorite varieties of beans come from Uganda. And it's just like, thank you. So (laughs) so when I have my Ugandan coffee in the future, I'm going to be thinking of you and your beautiful country. Oh, that's awesome. So Esther, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, because you're the book Overcoming the Emotional Pain in a Divorce Crisis. I mean, that's a very topic-specific book. So tell us a little bit about your story and what led you to write this book. Actually, like you've already uh, said, my background, I I have a Bachelor of Laws degree. And then I like sort of detoured and went to human resources. And within that time frame, I also became a business manager expert. So, and then my initial calling actually is, is, you know, is to preach the gospel, but I needed to have all this background. So actually I should have known in 1986, because that time the wildlife ministry in Uganda organized a nationwide uh, wildlife English composition context. And I emerged the best in the whole country. So this should have triggered my understanding as a would-be future author, but actually it didn't. So in my writing career, I uh, started in 2014. Uh, after going through my divorce, I envisioned that uh, writing this book would help heal many people with broken hearts and emotions resulting from a divorce. So my history really, my story really is that my ex-husband and I were cohabited for three years before marrying in 1996. Our relationship was founded on physical appearance and financial ability. In 2003, my ex-husband left Uganda and settled in the United States for various reasons. This created an eight-year gap of separation. Yeah, Yeah, so meanwhile, uh, my ex-husband was not strong enough to defeat temptation. So these extramarital affairs had in his heart and that he suggested to end the marriage while we are still in separation. But thanks be to God that we reunited as a family in 2010 and the marriage was terminated in 2014. So this is uh, briefly my story that birthed the book I titled Overcoming Emotional Pain in a Divorce Crisis. Thank you. And I'm curious with the book and in the ministry, I mean, it's any ministry, whether in in the Mm -hmm. spirit of full disclosure, I'm not married. I have never been married. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you're the right person to help me with that piece, but <laughs> that, you know, there's I'm sure there's reasons why that is the case. But I have been around friends, family that have gone through divorces, and I remember growing up separations, and uh-huh. I would imagine there's a lot of emotion going into the divorce, the pain going into the divorce and going through it and coming uh-huh. out of it. What were some of the lessons you learned? that you were able to share in the book about how do you, what I would call not make divorce either scorched earth or how do you prevent it in the first place? What What is the book more leaning towards? Is it a little bit of both? Yeah, it's leaning to actually a little bit of both because right, what we are seeing is having a servant spirit, you know, how are you serving your spouse? How are you valuing your relationship? How are you looking at the future of the family? So how are you valuing how 
the divorce or the uh, the situation with whatever created you know a misunderstanding. How is it going to impact the people around you, your your children? So it's, it's basically about the hardness of the heart, our unwillingness, you know, to to forgive, our un, our willingness, if I can put it that way, to be you know so condemning and not allowing a gap you know, to, to forgive others, you know, not allowing a gap to restore the relationship. So those are some of the issues that we are discussing in this book. So it is, what is so very important for me is to serve somebody from love because love overcomes all things. If we are able to glean from this book and have an overcoming life, we shall be able, you know, to minimize the rate of divorce, maybe in the United States and all over the world. When you wrote the book, was the lens by which you viewed it, was it culturally coming from the the African continent and your country, Uganda, and the culture within your community? Was it kind of the Western perspective, United States? And again, you are a pastor, a Mm -hmm. minister, Mm -hmm. and, and I know within the denomination, there likely is a lens by which you think about. And was there one lens versus another that that was important to you as you started to put your thoughts down on paper in this book? Yes. Actually, I looked at it from the lens of the Western culture, because in our Ugandan culture, divorces are rare. We try to like bury the head in the sand to think that everything will go away. You know, I, I'm here to face this. I'm here to, to, you know, to live out this life. But here in the United States, it's different. And really what I saw is what causes most of the divorces here in the U.S. is our inclination mostly to self. What am I having? If, you know, in a relationship, you look at it at what, how are you going to gain from it? You see, so how are you going to, you know, to benefit from the relationship? So when we come with strings attached in a relationship, this is what happens. It means we are not fully committed. We are not sacrificial to the relationship. So I basically looked at it from the lens of the Western culture. I totally appreciate that response. And I suspect, you know, even within, say, Western culture, and especially the United States, you know, we've got the Eastern, Southern, Southeast, there's the California, there's Mm -hmm. the culture, there's a huge Mm -hmm. culture in Utah, in Provo, for Mm -hmm. that matter. And yet the, you know, divorce is still prevalent everywhere. Mm -hmm. And something I suspect, and 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 you're going to know more about this than I am, but it seems as though when we think about ourselves, what I want, what I need mm-hmm. when I'm in marriage, mm-hmm. that divorce becomes, it seems to me, easy or perhaps too easy. Mm-hmm. Because if I'm thinking about what I want, what mm-hmm. I need, and if I'm not getting it, divorce to me is just like a transaction. <laughs> I, I, I agree. That's why in the in the first place, I say that if we enter into a marriage relationship with strings attached, when we don't have a servant spirit, when we don't have really value for the relationship, this is what will trigger the, the divorce. Any small challenge, somebody would just think about divorcing, separation, you know, breaking the marriage. So how do we stop or maybe we don't stop it, but how do we slow it down and slow down that inclination from viewing self and what I want to Uh the servant side? Uh Uh, How do we start to introduce that conversation so that when individuals, whatever age, whatever location that Uh they live in, Uh start to think about this, it's a more of a long-term process and learning as opposed to transactional and am I getting something or I'm not? How do we change that conversation? Yeah, so divorce can always be avoided by overthrowing the spirit of condemnation and selfishness, uh, you know, by binding the spirit of rejection and pride, by throwing away the urge to self-righteousness and by dying to the natural inclination of self and by embracing the overcoming life. Now we're going to ask him, what is the overcoming life? This is supernatural love. You know, mm. this supernatural love injects life in hopeless and dead situations. This kind of love conquers selfishness, fear, and insecurities. Mm-hmm. It forgives offenses and gently corrects mistakes with the goal of restoring life, communication, togetherness, joy, peace, and confidence. For the communities that you are serving, what has been their reaction to this kind of a conversation? It's almost, you know, I I know before going to marriage, 
We, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't matter what type of denomination you are. There is sessions with the member of the clergy, whoever that might be. And how has this conversation that you are alluding to in, you know, in today and in your book, how do you see this changing this dynamic? So the way we can start changing is from the ground up. So when, for example, young adults are into a relationship, They need counseling. They need education. They need to know the expectation of the marriage institution. They should not just, you know, go in, like uh, drive through. So this is not drive through business. This is a lifetime business. So if you want to have lasting relationship in a marriage, you need to have the fundamentals like I mentioned before. So they need to go through education, marriage education classes uh, before, you know, tying the knot so that they fully are fully aware of the expectation, of the challenges they'll face, of the uh, attitude, the character they should build, you know, you know, in order to serve each other. So this is what I'm envisioning that should happen. Very good, very good. And what has been the reaction to the book? And you know, obviously, it's on Amazon, and we are going to provide a link to the book "Overcoming Emotional Pain in a Divorce Crisis." We'll also include the book URL in our show notes, so folks can learn more about you, uh-huh. Esther. What are you hearing from the individuals that are going th- reading the book, going through the program uh-huh. that and that you are facilitating using the principles that you've just laid out in the book? What's been the reaction? Yeah. So actually I got one person who uh, purchased it and said, I wish I had uh, this book a long time ago. And he told me he had been reading it twice. He had been in five marriages so far. So Did I you did, say five? Uh-huh. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I believe- I haven't gotten one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I believe uh, this book and, you know, uh, our interaction together it will help him, you know, to, to mature in the way of handling uh, self and in the way of handling spouses, in the way of bringing life into the marriage. And I, I so far, I also have two other people I'm working with. So uh, they, are, oh, they are going through a divorce crisis as I'm speaking right now. So I'm working with them. And uh, they're really appreciative of this timely publication of the book. Fantastic. Esther, before we uh, sign off today, I would love if, you know, if there's a passage in the book that perhaps you could gift to our listeners today, and I know they would appreciate it, I would appreciate it. Of course. So uh, many marriages are suffering shipwreck and dissolution because of human inclination to natural desires. The absence of personal knowledge and understanding of marriage fundamentals has created casualties in marriage institution. So many have experienced violent storms in their marriages, resulting in emotional pain, broken hearts, and families. So overcoming uh, emotional pain in a divorce crisis discusses the beauty of marriage, challenges experienced in a marriage, how to conquer emotional trauma throughout the divorce experience, and enjoying life after divorce. Thank you so much. And I appreciate it. And <laughs> I think I know, I know our audiences because it's, just, I mean, it's like you said, it, in our communities, it, it, sometimes mm-hmm. we think that divorce is more of a transaction and it's not, it's a lifetime investment. That's right. Or, excuse me, marriage, marriage is a lifetime investment. And mm-hmm. if we That's don't right. apply that principle, mm-hmm. Divorce becomes just a transaction. So uh, we truly appreciate uh, the work that you're doing. And once again, we're going to share the, the links from the book to, to Amazon. Uh, Esther, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us on the Success Insight podcast. Thank you, Howard, for inviting me. I'm so appreciative and excited about this interview. I hope it's going to minister to many people who, who you know, hear our conversation. Well, there you have it, folks. We have just chatted with Esther Seshizivu. And Esther is a minister and a honorary doctor of divinity from the Paradise Church International Ministries. And she has authored a fine book, The Overcoming Emotional Pain in a Divorce Crisis, Time-Tested Biblical Secrets That Win in a Divorce Crisis. And as we shared earlier, we'll have links to the book on our show notes. Hope you appreciated today's conversation and Esther's gift of the reading uh, from her book. And please let us know in a comment section on our website, your thoughts about the interview and 
Also, if you have other individuals that you think we ought to interview, please do make those introductions for us. So for my co-host, Randy Ford, this is Howard Fox. You've been listening to another episode of the Success Insight Podcast. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing today, go out there and have a phenomenal day. And we'll see you in the next episode. Take care now. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com.